First off, I need to make it clear that this video is sponsored by Cube Coders, the makers of AMP. AMP stands for Application Management Panel and is a excellent way to manage game servers for games like Minecraft, CSGO, CF2 and a whole load of other options, all from a web browser with a load of different features that you might not otherwise get running those servers natively. Now with that said, in this video we're going to be showing you how to get it installed and then getting some servers up and running and actually playing on them. So let's start with the installation process. Well you can install AMP on both Windows and Linux and it's a pretty simple experience for both. Basically with game servers you want that PC to be running 24-7 and my experience of running Windows machines 24-7 is that it's not a great experience and I already have uh, an Ubuntu box up and running. It's uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS uh, and so we're going to install it on that to, to make it nice and easy. Now when it comes to the install process for Linux, it is literally a one line install. All you do is run this command and that gets their ins installation script and you enter a couple of you know, passwords and questions and that's really it and you're up and running. Now when you run the command, the first thing that it'll ask you for is a password for the Linux user account it's going to create for itself. You can just press enter to have it auto generate a strong one or you can enter your own password there. Again, make sure it's nice and strong and then you can enter that uh, again to confirm it. The next thing I'll ask for is the username you want to use for the admin web panel uh, as the, the admin account. Again, you can press enter to select admin or you can enter your own username if you'd prefer. And then when you do, it'll ask you for a password for that account too. Make sure that this is a nice and strong password because this will be the outside facing uh, web panel that hypothetically anyone could have access to but that you don't want them to, to be able to get in and mess with all of your servers and delete things, whatever else. So make sure it's a nice and strong password. Once you've entered and confirmed that password, it'll, it'll ask you a couple of yes, no questions. All you need to do is press either Y or N on your keyboard for it to, to register those answers. And the first one that I'll ask you is if you're planning on running Minecraft servers. The reason it's asking that is if it needs to install Java to be able to do that. And while you can say uh, yes and just have it install anyway, if you don't plan on running them anytime soon, you can say no and then always install the correct version of Java later. But in my case, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna press no and I'll move on to the next question. The next thing it asks is about Steam games. And if you're planning on running Steam game servers like CSGO and TF2, but also games like Ark and Rust. If you're planning on running those servers, then you will need to press Y here, which in my case I am, so I'm gonna press Y. The next thing on the list is uh, if you want to make use of a program called Docker. Docker is a containerization tool, which essentially means that each of your servers can run in their own little bubbles separated from both each other and the rest of your stuff running on your system. This is a very good thing for more commercialized servers. Uh, it helps you kind of maintain security and uh, keeping everything separate. But if you're just running it for you and your friends, it technically adds a little bit of complexity. And so for me, I'm gonna leave that for now. Again, you can sort that out later if you'd prefer. Uh, and then the, the final question that I'll ask you is about uh, encryption and using HTTPS to secure your connection to your server. Now you need a domain name for this and a domain name that's already pointed at your server. So if you don't have a domain name, you just wanna run it from your home IP address and from your, you know, for your friends, that kind of thing, then you can press no here as well. Otherwise, if you want to, you can press yes and go through that setup. Then you can hit enter and let it do its thing. It doesn't take overly long to get all that set up. Uh, and then it will say that it's waiting for first time setup in a browser. So go to the IP address of your server. In my case, it was 192.168.1.63 and port 8080, so colon 8080 at the end of that. And you'll be taken to the first time setup wizard. So press next and then assuming you don't need to run AMP across multiple servers, which is definitely the more advanced approach, you can click next again and then input your license key. 
If you don't already have one, you can head to cubecoders.com and pick one up. The uh, most sort of basic option only costs £7.50 as a one-off payment for up to five instances, and then there are more advanced licenses if you prefer. Then once you've entered your license key, then you press next, and assuming you're happy sending crash reports to Cube Coders, you can press next and finish, and that is it up and running. It takes a second, and then you'll be brought to the actual dashboard. Now, this is where you can create all of your instances, mess with all your settings, create extra users, and a load of other stuff. So let's go through with creating a, a CSGO server to start off with. So we're here on the admin dashboard, and to create a new server, the first thing we need to do is create an instance. So click the button, and you can select from the, the list of games that you want to create a server for. In my case, since I want a CSGO server, I'm going to click Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Then you can enter a friendly name so that you can differentiate servers, uh, especially in things like Minecraft worlds, that's really useful to have. So pick a name, in my case CSGO1, and then click Create Instance. It'll take a second to create the instance of the server for you, uh, and then we can go into the Manage option, which is on the right-hand side. Now under Manage is where you will find all of the configuration settings for your server, under configuration specifically. If you go down to the source server settings, then you can pick what maps you want to play on. In my case, I'm gonna do DE Dust 2 because um, that's the map that I know the best. Uh, you can change the number of players, you can change the server name, if there's a server password, uh, a load of other stuff, you can en enable or disable VAC, um, and make sure that you enable or switch over the server IP address to the output IP address of your server so you can actually connect to that later. And uh, you can also go to the Steam Workshop tab and add and remove Steam Workshop packages, which is great for doing uh, added game modes like Prop Hunt, for example. Then once you're happy with all of the configuration settings you have chosen, you can then go back to the sort of nice graphed dashboard and click the update button. This will take a second to download all of the files that you need and get the server running. And then once it is up and running and ready to go, then all you need to do is fire up the game and connect to it and start playing. To connect to the server, you can do it from the dashboard, which is really nice. Inside the manage page for your instance, uh, once the server is up and running, you can click the connect to server button and it will open the game from Steam for you. And there's also a little sort of link icon that you can right click and copy that URL. That is the uh, IP address and port for the well server you want to run. And you can run that from inside the game. In CSGO, in theory, you can go to the community server browser, click LAN and you should see it there. Or the, the easier way to do it is, especially if you copy that uh, IP address or URL, then you can just open the console and type connect and then the IP address colon port number, which is 27015 by default, and you are straight into the game. Right, so we're in and playing on the, uh, the game server. Um, I'm playing CSGO on Dust2 uh, and as you're probably aware if you've watched any of my videos, CSGO isn't my um, my normal forte. I'm uh, awful at it. <laughs> so um, let's uh, let's basically die to uh, the highest level bots, and you can have fun mostly laughing at me and my uh, lack of ability. <laughs> and I can never find anyone. Dust Two is a very small map, you know, by like normal map standards. But I still I can still never find anyone. And then they run around in groups. And I died. Cool. <laughs> Let's see if a semi-auto sniper is any better. It won't be. Oh. Ooh, okay, maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe that's uh this is this is my ticket. Oh I should use my health shot. Come on. There we go. I have some health left. Where are they? Hey, that's not bad. I mean, it is, but you know, no scope. Didn't work. <laughs> ah, the op. Now I can miss everybody with a single shot instead of ten. Apparently, I came second. Well, either way, the server felt pretty good. 
um, even if my, uh, my, my usual aim um, well, lived up to, to normal standards. Also, a quick note, if you are planning on running your server uh, with access to the internet, as in you want your friends to be able to play with you remotely rather than everyone on your local network, you will need to do something called port forwarding on your router. It will depend on what router you have, how to do that, so Google the name of your router and port forwarding to see how that one works for you. But to find out what ports you need to forward, you can go to the edit ports option in the dashboard and it shows you all of the ports that are necessary to forward. For example, if you want to access the admin dashboard from outside of your local network, you would port forward 8080. And for the server, especially the CSGO server, you would want to port forward 27015. Now, since this is both a sponsor video and I'm not quite the, the target market for this anyway, I thought I would ask Luca, who is a long-term patron and a member of the Discord, uh, who actually uses AMP to run a whole load of different servers, mostly Minecraft from what I've seen, but a load of different servers there, which by the way, if you're interested in joining a server, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description down below, or at least the, the domain that you can connect to if you wanna play there. Now, either way, he was saying about uh, both how he very much likes using it, makes running a load of servers easier, but there's also a couple of extra sort of bonus features that you get by using AMP that you don't necessarily get by running those servers natively. Things like having two-factor authentication, also having uh, different users and permissions for those users. He has a couple of uh, what are effectively server mods that uh, can help him manage those servers, but he doesn't necessarily want them to be able to, you know, delete everything uh, just either by accident or I suppose maliciously if they really wanted to. And so using AMP to, to control all of that makes it way easier. And also features like having scheduled tasks that can happen when people, things like join your game or join your server, and also a wide selection of super easy to install plugins that are all available through the dashboard too. So with that said, if you're interested in checking out AMP for yourself, then I'm gonna leave a link to them in the description down below where you can take a look and uh, you can actually download AMP and get it installed uh, without a license key. You won't be able to run any servers, but if you do wanna download it and have a look around and then add a license key later, that is possible. Either way, thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And like I said, if you wanna check them out, there'll be a link to them in the description down below. With that said, that is pretty much it for me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And like I said, thank you to QCoders for sponsoring the video and feel free to check them out in the link in the description down below. Otherwise, feel free to check out the rest of the links in the description down below if you wanna help support the channel in other ways than just watching sponsored videos like this one. And feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.